Hey, I'm Dave and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I edited this picture. This is a picture I shot a couple months ago up in Park City. Um, I shot uh, probably three um, HDR exposures uh, with just ambient light, uh, which is typically what I do. Uh, then I shot one picture with a, a flash. I try and get a flash that's pretty flat, you know, actually really flashy looking, but that's okay. That's what I want. I want to get really good color with that flash. So I'll stop down a whole bunch, um, you know, and, and try and get, you know, as good a color as I can, even though the image is flat, because I'll use those HDR images to put the, all the, the shadow information in and the things that really make it come to life. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at how I put this piece together. And here we go. Let's pop right over here in the Lightroom. And um, this is our base image right here. As I said, <clears throat> I'll shoot HDR and I'll shoot a couple of exposures, you know, above and below a base exposure. In this case, the base exposure is pretty much unusable. It's, um, it's got too much highlights on one side and too much shadows in the other. So I, I, it's in the middle, which is where it should be, but it's really not something that has much uh, that I can use. So I'm going to skip that for now. Um, this is my underexposed. This is my overexposed. Those are the two that I'm going to use. Um, and then this is my flash that I'm going to use. Um, so let's, let's start with this one. Um, this is only going to be for the windows. Um, you can see that um, when I expose properly for those, I lose the whole room, which is fine. That's why we shoot HDR, so that we've got the option to, to use the best parts of all our images. So, all right, let's go ahead and just set this one up for the, what's out the window. So, zoom in a little bit so we can see it pretty good. It looks a little flat to me. It needs some contrast. Um, I'm going to add clarity. I think clarity really will help. See how that darkened um, the, the shadows and all that? So let's bring those shadows up a little bit more so it looks a little bit more mo better. Um, that looks okay. Um, I do want to see a little bit more color in it. Um, so I'm going to bring up the vibrance just a little bit or the saturation. And also, one thing I really want to see, I love blue skies, so I'm going to lower the luminance of the blue, which, not that much, because that looks fakey, but right in there, that looks pretty good. Let's look at that. So, you know, overall, that does look a little overdone. By the time this all gets put together, I think that'll look just fine. Um, let's see, maybe... I wonder what would happen if I added a little bit of yellow for sun. What do you think of that? You know what? I kind of like that. This is the um, first time I've tried that, and I do like that. So for the windows, I like that a lot. Add a little bit. No, see, that's a little bit too much. I like it right there. That looks really good. So all I'm looking at here is what I'm seeing out the windows. This fence, this green porch area, it is a little overdone. Um... I will be able to fix that really easily later on. So I'm not worried about that. I'm just looking out at that view. I want that view. That view is what's going to sell this picture. I want people to see that view and I want them to really look longingly at, it, at that view. So that's what I'm really trying to get here. So boom, that's good. What I do now is I mark this as green so that I know that this is one of the images that I'm going to use. Um, you know, when I'm using so many different layers, um, when I have to come back into Lightroom, if I ever do, either later to re-edit it or to pull another layer or something like that while I'm doing this edit, I'm going to want to be able to know quickly which ones are the good ones. So that's why I put a little color tab on it. All right, this next one, obviously it's a little overexposed, but you know what, this is fine. Um, with RAW, I can definitely pull this out. So bring down those highlights, bring up the shadows a little bit, um, it's still a little over, I think, so let's bring it down a little bit so I'm not crushing the right. That's probably pretty good in there. has no contrast, though. It needs definitely needs some contrast. Um, make that a little fuller. 
Um, you know what though, I'm losing down here. Let's bring the shadows. There we go. That, that, that looks pretty good. Um, got a lot of blue in this. I don't really care. I'm not going to be pulling color information out of this image. I'm only looking at the black and white. If we look up at the histogram, this isn't too bad a histogram. You know, it is a little heavy on the right here, but we're not really crushing it on either side, which is good. Um, you know, there's a lot of white walls, white in this. Um, so I expect to have it, you know, right heavy, which is good for this image. It's not good for every image. For this image, it's good. If we go back to our window pole, it's going to be heavy to the left because that's what it is. I'm not interested in all the stuff that's black. I could care less about. I'm not going to use it. I'm worried about that, and I'm setting this by eye. So I guess my point is you got to look at every little thing um, for what you're using it for, not for what somebody's magic formula for a perfect histogram is or anything like that. So anyway, I'm looking at this. I'm trying to look at this with a black and white eye. And so there we go. You know what? That is a pretty dang good looking black and white. We've got good um, everything all throughout. We've got good tonality all throughout. We're a little burnt out out the windows. I expect that. The windows are going to be super bright. So, um, so I'm really happy with the way that goes. So let's mark that green. All right, pop over here to our color image. Uh, again, you know, we're a little hot here, we're a little dark here, all of this I can fix, you know, from a raw image. You are shooting raw, aren't you? If you're not, um, hang up this video right now, go learn how to shoot raw. You should only be shooting raw. Um, so highlights and shadows, um, again, really flat looking, so let's add some contrast to that, not a whole lot. Um, I want really rich looking colors here. I don't want such super saturated colors I want rich looking colors again I'm not looking out the windows I'm looking at all of this stuff I've got a glare here we'll get rid of that I've got shadows over here we will be getting rid of that but you know I'm looking here and this brown just looks luscious to me that that looks really good um, I already know I'm not going to be able to pull this um, floor from this shot so I'm not too worried about that um, but overall I'm liking this shot so let's mark this one green those are the exposures we've got, so let's go ahead and pop those into Photoshop. So edit, edit in, and uh, oh, I, I need to highlight all three, don't I? So those three, um, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop, and here it comes. Dang, I'm out of coffee. What am I going to do? Um... I could pause the recording, but you know what? I'm, I'm, this is the fifth time I've tried to do this video today, so I, I really, really, really desperately want to try and get through one of them. All right, so here are my three layers. Um, this is actually the order I like them in. If they're not in the order that you like, you can just grab on one and move it. It's really easy in Photoshop to move them. So what I like is I like to start off on the base with my color image. Um, this is where all the color information is going to come from. On top of that, um, I will put my ambient layer, which will be essentially my black and white information. Again, I know it looks ugly. I'm cool with that. Don't worry. And then on top of that, I do any of my specialty things. Window poles. Let's say I was running water in a bathtub and I did a timed exposure, so I got that you know, real milky looking flow of water. I would put that above because that's just a minor thing that's going to go on top of everything else. And I've typically already adjusted that layer so that it looks exactly how I want. So I'll put that on top and just cut that in last. Um, in the case of windows though, for some reason I really do like to cut them in first. Um, oh, just backing up, I just wanted to say that just because here I have three layers, a color, an ambient, and uh, uh, a specialty layer doesn't mean that you have to have three. Again, it's all about what you need to shoot to make that image work. Um, if, let's say, for instance, this was a second room out there, I might have shot this flash, you know, I would have shot this flash, and then I would have taken another flash layer with me in that second room, flashing that so that I got a good color exposure there, and I would have two 
flash exposure layers that I would cut together, you know, this part and then that part. Same with ambient, although typically not so much with ambient. You can usually get ambient good in one shot. But sometimes if you've got darker layers, you know, a long hallway or something, you may do a second layer, you know, that's exposed up a little bit so that you could get all the way down a hallway. Anyway, shoot for the place, not for what I've done or what Mike Kelly does or what anybody else does. Always look at the room and shoot to the room. So anyway, here we are. Um, I have a bunch of actions that I put up here uh, that are, are things that I use that, that simplify my life. For instance, F2 will um, highlight all the layers and then go over here to this auto align layers and line them all up. I'm shooting on a tripod. I don't really feel the need to do it here. Plus one of the um, versions of this I did, I actually did auto align and it didn't auto align well and I had to stop because I couldn't make that image work. So I'm just going to let them all work. Um, F3 merges all my layers. Don't need to do that right now. F4 I am going to do right now. This is a real time saver for me. When I hit F4 it adds a black layer mask to a layer. Typically when you've got a layer um, highlighted and you click this add mask button, you'll get a white um, layer or mask, which is not what I need. If you want a black layer, you click on the mask, but you hold down the alt button and then you'll get a black layer, which reveals the one behind it. Um, but I'm lazy, so I just hit F4 and then F4 and that, that adds those layers. It saves me a little time. So anyway, I'm also going to contradict myself by um, putting in the um, window layer mask first. Um, for some reason, I just like doing this. It's kind of fun. So l let's do that. So here we go. We make sure that we're clicking on the layer mask because that's what we're editing. We're not editing a picture. Um, zoom in here and let's start um, lining up our, our windows. Um, I like to use this polygon lasso tool. You could hit W and select that, but you know what? You never know exactly what it's going to choose and what it's not going to choose. I'd rather go in there, choose it for myself, and know what I'm choosing. So that's why I'm going to use the polygon tool. So for the very first one, you just click along the line of the window. Um, you know, and you outline that. And you're done. Um, for the second one, you actually have to hit second and each preceding one. You have to hit shift, which if look at the polygon tool real close. When I hit shift right now, see how it adds that plus? So we're adding this to our mask. Um, typically, and you might think that this should be the case, and it should be, this window should be straight right here. It's not because I'm shooting fairly wide angle and I'm getting some distortion. Um, I don't like to do my corrections um, on multiple image on multiple layers because again I'm not quite sure if I'm doing the exact same thing on all three layers. And I want them; they all need to line up. So I'm not going to do my lens correction till I'm to a single layer, which is still a ways off yet. Yet, so that's why I did this line as segments rather than a full line because it's just you can see it's just not straight. All right, so let's go up here. Um, let's start with this corner. Again, I'm holding the shift, so I got that plus there. Um, adding that in. Um, you know what, that's a little too low. Let's go a little higher. One of the cool things about using um, layer masks, too, is if you mess up, um, it's really easy after the fact to go in and correct them and, and fix your masks. So um, even if you do something and you're off a little bit, you know, you can tell later on, you can see and go, oh, look, that mask, that's too dark there, or that's too light there, or I'm seeing, I'm seeing the effect of the mask. So you can go back and repair it. That's one really nice thing about masks. Uh, one thing I really like about them. So again, I'm just holding that shift key, outlining these, and you know, these are gonna end up at 2,000, you know, pixels. So you don't have to be super perfect, but you do, you do wanna be really, really close. Uh, let's 
zoom in here. We're going to have to outline this light, so I want to be in really close. Um, again, hit the shift key. One of the versions I did of this, I didn't hit the shift key right here, and I had to redo all that I've done up to this point. So keep on that shift key. If that happens to you, and you don't get too far along after that, and you notice it, just hit control Z and back out of it, and you can go to the point where you last had a really good mat, and hopefully not have to redo a whole lot. Um, I didn't realize it till I got done almost completely with the image, so it would have been worthless to control Z back and um, try and save it. It was easier to just redo the, the whole top layer of windows again. They're fairly square, so they, they were really easy to do. Um, but control Z is like your best friend. You know, never be afraid to try things and experiment. Because um, you can always control Z out of it and, um, you know, get, get something that looks good. Um, you know, if, if you've got an idea, try it. Always try it. Maybe you'll get something really good out of it. Again, I'm going outlines. You know, um... Is it Mike Kelly uses the pen tool for doing this, and um, I think that's cool. Some people really like the pen tool; they learned on the pen tool. You know, especially like if you if you started in Illustrator, you're going to know the pen tool better than this tool. Um, I just happen to start here with this tool, so to me, this is what's easy um, and works the fastest for me. I I tried. There's an online tutorial to teach you the pen tool and I tried it and I didn't do too bad on it and I can use the pen tool fairly well but I just end up liking this better it just you know it, it's what I know it's what I do so um, I do apologize this is about as much fun as watching paint dry isn't it um, I think I've just got one more window to do this lower part and then we can start seeing some magic then we'll start doing the fun stuff down come on go down and right there and go all right let's um, look at this full screen looks like we caught everything okay here's a fun little trick go to feather and add about a three uh, pixel feather on those edges. That'll just help blend it a little better. Okay, again, we're on that mat or on that mask. We're going to want hit B for brush or click on the brush, and we're going to want white. Um, if you've got black up, just hit X and that'll take you back and forth between white and black. We're going to need a lot bigger brush than this because I like to do things like this big. Um, our flow is 23%. That's fine. Let's just start painting it in. And woo, woo, woo. you can see the mask reflects what the mask actually looks like. All right, there, we've got it in. Let me turn it on and off. See, much better. Um, that green down at the bottom, I told you we'd fix that. We're going to do that now. I hit X to turn my paint color to black. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna take my flow down a little bit, and I'm just gonna like start cutting out some of that green till it's not so overpowering. So now we've got good windows. We've got a decent green in the foreground. Um, I think that looks pretty good. You know what? I'm maybe going to bring that opacity down just a teeny bit. Nope, I'm not because I can start to see the flash reflection in it. <clears throat> I think that that'll work. That looks pretty good. All right, so now we're going to deselect. I also, from this layer, want to pull these lights. I like that yellow light. So um, hit X again so I'm back on white. Make my brush a lot smaller. See, we've got a 5% flow. Let's just try and bring some more yellow into those lights. That looks pretty good. You know, we're just doing this by eye. I want to see them. You know, another good light I want to see is this one up here. This one we can um, easily put a box around. 
so that we get just that right area. Go ahead and feather that. Three pixels is going to be a lot more up here than it was on that other thing, but it'll look good. So a little bit. Of, there we go. Look at that. Maybe a little too much. Let's back it off just a teeny bit. I just went to black and went over it a couple of times. So deselect, and then there's some other lights over here. I want to get a little bit of yellow in those. So I'm hitting the left square bracket to make that smaller, X to make it white, and then let's just see, we just add a little bit of color in there. People may notice this, and that's why I like to, you know, I want it to look real. And since this is on our topmost layer, this is going to show through all the editing we do on all the other layers. So, so it'll show. Um, you know, just get a little bit of yellow in there, and that's really good. Um, yellow. All right, let's take a look at that. One thing I wanted to look at was... Um, yeah, see, see how that wire is gray except where it comes in front of that, where it turns black right there? That's because we're getting that wire from that really underexposed image. So here's what we can do. We go back to the mask, and let's just go ahead and select um, that wire's width, just like that. Oops, I went too far, so I'm going to control Z. There we go. And um, let's go ahead and let's see, do we want to paint that white or black? I think we want it black. So X, let's see, that should lighten it. Select, deselect. There we go, that looks a little better. See. That looks pretty good for our window pole, for our lights. We've got a little bit of yellow everywhere. Here's before, here's after. See, that just looks natural. It's not too overdone. Now let's go to our ambient layer. This layer, um, like I said, we're going to pull all our black and white information for this image from there. So we'll have the color from the flash, which also has these ugly shadows, but we'll get rid of the shadows because we'll use the shadows from our ambient layer. To do that, we change our blending mode from normal to luminosity. Then we use a white brush. You use a big white brush with low flow. So I'm hitting the, the right square bracket to get a nice big brush. I'm going to take my flow down to like 12. Well, 9. That's good enough. It, there's no exact in this. Change my brush to white. And I start to bring in that ambient layer. You can see here in the upper right, look at that shadows disappearing. Gone. Let's see. Let's look at the shadows behind um, the, the oven. And they're gone. These shadows up here, slowly but surely, those are gone. And now we're starting to get a lot more realistic looking image. We're not having that flash look anymore. We're having a more natural look. There, bring that down a little bit. Um, oops, I hate it when I do that. Um, yeah, so that's starting to look pretty good. And um, you know what, probably, if this were a quick and dirty, I'd probably be done there. In fact, that's my day in, day out real estate stuff. That's probably about where I ended. I may not even do window pulls, or I'll do them a lot more sloppy than this. Um, but this one, I really like this this kitchen. I really think that there's a lot more I can do here. Um, so I'm going to do it. Um, so I'm looking at this, and there's a couple problems that I see. Um, one thing I don't like is that glary floor. I think we can fix that glary floor. Um, you know, I don't like uh, the back here. I think we can pull some better stuff out of that. And I think we can do a lot better on the cabinets. I don't like the shadow there on the cabinets. Um, I think there's a lot more we can do. So let's go back to our original images in Lightroom and see what we got that we can work from. Um, now that I know I want to clean up this floor a little bit, I know just from previous experience that floors, 
The thing that kills floors, especially in these ambient pictures you can see, is the glare from out the windows. So I know I cannot pull a floor from an ambient layer. Even an underexposed one, by the time I get the exposure up to where I want, there's that glare again. So that's just not an option. So I know instantly I have to go here to the flash exposure. That's going to be the least amount of glare. Um, had I thought of it, I could have lit this better and gotten no glare. But, you know, it is what it is. I have to deal with this or work with what I've got. So I'm going to take this image. I'm going to make a virtual copy. Go to the virtual copy. Not that one. And um, I'm going to set this up so that I can get just a really good floor. So I want some more contrast. I want that exposure down a little bit. Um, let's see. I do, I do want um, maybe a little black. A little clarity in there. You know, I, I, I want that to be nice and rich looking. Um, I, no, D. Hayes doesn't really do it for me. Um, let's see, exposure. You know, I just kind of play around till I see what I want to see there. Um, one thing I do see that I don't like is a lot of blue in there. So I'll go over here to HSL, take the saturation of the blue down a little bit. You know, right to there. Let's see if I can get some of those highlights out of there, too. Nope, they're not really going to go. What about lights? Will that do that? I'm looking at that glare there. Nope, that kills the image, doesn't it? Um, you know what? That's probably about as good as we're going to get. Um, maybe a little aqua down. Yeah, I think that's about as good as that's going to get. You can see what that did to the windows. It totally kills those. Um, but uh, for the floor, that's going to make a good floor. So I'm just going to hit Edit in um, Photoshop, and it'll come up as its own image here. Okay, so I take that image, just right-click on it, and um, duplicate layer to the image I'm working on, and it'll be a new layer here. So I hit my F4, or make a black mask on that, and then... You can see how ugly now that floor is. Now you see it, don't you? So I'll just start painting some white in gradually into the mask, not onto the floor. And I'll bring in that, um, that floor I just made. See our, our, our uh, glare is going down. I'm getting a nice richer color. Um, it's really nice. I think I'm going to put this above it just no let's yeah let's leave that above it and what I want to get some of that there's some flashy look to it I want to get that off uh, let's just yeah see what what can we do there if I hit X and go black on that will that take it down some that just may be something I just have to live with. Like I said, I didn't shoot a specific floor shot for this one, so... Um, let's go ahead and go white here and see if I can bring that... Yeah, that looks a lot better over in the lower right now. <clears throat> yeah. Alright, that... Go. And yeah. All right. Cabinets. Not happy with the cabinets. Um, let's go see what we can do in the cabinet area. Um, that just may be too dark. Let's see what we can do with this. This is that image we didn't use. This is the base exposure. I may be able to get something good out of the cabinets with this one. What I want to do is get some nice, rich, deep browns like that. Um, let's add some clarity so that we have some sharpness in it. Um, you know, this one we're just not going to get at all because there's just too much glare there. Um, see, maybe if I take the highlights down, will that bring... 
Mm. There's some blue there and some green there. So let me take the blue and the green out of this. Green, aqua, blue. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to pull that cabinet too well. Um, there's just no saving that. Um, but the rest of these cabinets, I think, look pretty good. So let's go ahead and edit that in Photoshop. Again, it'll be its own new layer, or an own new image. So I duplicate that layer back into the image I'm editing. And there we go. Put a black mask on that. And now, let's start bringing in our beautiful new cabinets. Maybe go a little higher on the flow so you can see it happening. See, hopefully I'm going to get rid of that shadow. That's what I'd like to do. And I'd like to make these cabinets look really pretty, really inviting, like that. Um, yeah, that glare, I guess it, I'm just going to have to live with that. But I got rid of that shadow over there of that one light, which I hated. So that's a good thing. Um, let's see, yeah, darken that corner. There we go. Darken that a little bit. And you know what? I'm going to make a little mask here real quick so that I can get that area. I want to get that. And I'm going to hit Alt now and take the faucet out of it so I don't screw up the faucet but I want to get that area. Alright, so just run it back and forth along there. And deselect, and now that should be... Here, let's take a look at it. Before, after. Before, after. That's, I think that looks a lot better. Um, now let's look at, at there. I think... I can do a lot better with that too. Um, let's look at all these. Actually, you know what? It looks like that looks pretty good. I do like that. Um, let me make a copy of this. So I'm going to do a virtual copy and I'm going to take the yellows out of this. I don't like the yellows about these right now so typically um, incandescent light is you know about 30 35 orange and about 70 yellow you still want a little bit in there but um, you know I think that looks pretty good um, let's see if I can make those I want the lines to appear a little bit more so we see that herringbone um, so let's see if maybe more contrast will do that uh, let's get rid of some of those highlights. And let's see if the darks, what 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 will the darks do? No. Yeah, there. See, we're starting to see that herringbone. I really like that. Um, this turned magenta for some, I don't know, reason. So let's just grab that, grab that color, and take that out of there. Um, all right, let's... Um, I think for that one little area, this is going to be good. So edit in Photoshop. Again, it's a brand new layer. And duplicate that into our base image. And let's just bring that in right there. See, that just adds a little bit more definition there. I think I might have gone up a little bit right there. A little bit to the side there. Um, that looks pretty good. The toaster turns a little um, yellow, too yellow to me. So I'm going to take some of that out. I'm just blocking the, the mask again a little bit there. 
Um, all right, I think um, I think by and large we've got a pretty good image put together here now. Um, so I think that's good, good to go. Um, all right, let's combine all of that, and that's my F3 button for those of you playing the Dave editing game at home. And there we go, we've got one nice layer. Now I can do my lens correction, try and straighten up my lines and stuff. This lens <coughs> is typically an 8. That's what I remember it being. So let's see. Um, oh, that's a long way, isn't it? Uh, let's go to 8. That's 9, that's 8. Um, what I'm looking at right now, really, is that I have straight lines, not that they're necessarily vertical. Um, and I think those look straight. They don't look bowed anymore. Um, and then let's see if I can make them straight now. There we go. Um, that looks pretty good. I'm really happy with that. Now, we get to have some fun editing. You know what? Here's one of the reasons um, I keep all my um, layers separate while I'm editing. Because I get ideas while I'm doing something. Let me take off that. And let's... I want to look at each layer individually. That's where I pulled the lights from. Let's turn that off. And let's look at the lights here. No, I don't like those. Turn that off. Look at the lights there. You know what? I think I like these lights a lot better. Than um, these lights. So let's black these out. See, I just, that dark area right there, I just don't like. It looks dirty to me. So I'm going to... Let's bring that up a little bit. Clean that up a little bit. Um, let's see, does that affect it? No. Okay. So I'll make this white. I like those lights a lot better. All right, now we'll combine them all into another layer. Oh, it won't because there's a blank layer that's not being shown. Okay, there we go. Now let's go back to our filter lens correction. I believe I said eight, right? Was it eight? Let's see. Eight. How's that look? All right, and vertical. I don't remember what that was, but oh, that's too much. I'm looking down a vertical line to see. That's. Let's try five. Let's try four. Let's try three. Okay, three looks good on the left. Three looks good on the right. There we go. All right, I like that a lot better. All right, so now we start the cleanup. This is the part where I fix things like this right here. That's, um, uh, you know, dirt on my lens. Boom, gone. I don't know what that is, but let's get rid of that. Make that go away. Um, I'm just using um, the spot healing brush for that. Um, I'm going to go down here. I really hate, hate these. So I'm going to get rid of those with um, a clone stamp tool, something like that. And I try and go as close as I can so that I'm getting, you know, the right color and all that. And I usually like to go halfway and then the other half halfway. That way it blends hopefully really good. Um, this, because um, because of the two, I'll go top to bottom. So let's go bottom to top now. 
And those should be pretty seamless. Oops, can't like that. Um, if there's a little bit of a smudge in there, make your tool a lot bigger. Get your flow down and then just go from a nearby area and just try and even it. And that should do it. Just don't get any lines or anything like that. Just make sure it's nice and smooth. And um, there we go. Nice clean wall. Is there something up there? You know, I could go crazy watching these white things. Looking at white all day long. Um, okay, that looks good. Whatever that is. Speaker. That needs to go. Needs to go. Can't have that. Let's make this nice and small. Grab from there and just kind of come in on it. Let's get our flow up, otherwise we'll be here all day long. Okay, get halfway through it and then come back from the other side. And then let's go ahead and bring that flow down and just grab something from there and just kind of even it. Um, don't like the shadow there, so I'm just going to take that out. Just make it disappear. Just, it's rough. Who cares? Here's one of the problems when you're doing that luminosity masking like that. You see this light yellow right there? You're going to have to get rid of that. Um, it's actually not that hard to do. Um, looks harder than it is. I got rid of that. Okay, to get rid of it, let's hit our W. I think that's magic wand. Is that what that is? So that selects our light fixture. We're going to need to invert it so that we're selecting everything outside of that. And then um, go from over here and just take that light yellow out of it like that. And then that, that beautiful mask keeps it from taking out the light fixture. So... We also need to, we've lightened that string, so let's just bring that in there, line it up, clean it up on both sides, voila, select, deselect. There's another one over here, and I know that one's going to have, yeah, see that slight yellow, so W, select that, select, invert, Oops, what did, oh, I didn't, there we go. Just bring that in. Let's bring the flow up a little bit so we're not here all day. Oh, I forgot to invert it. That's what I did. Sorry. Wait a second, let's start this all over. Select, deselect. Okay, W. There, I've got that. I'll select inverse. I think when I hit the W, or I got the W, yeah, there we go. There we go. All cleaned up. That looks beautiful. All right, what else? Um, who hates that vent besides me? I think all of us, right? Same thing. Let's get a little smaller oops I don't like that when I do that so I when I start when I've got things close by that I might run over when I'm correcting my mistakes I just go ahead and back out of it um, I don't want to have to rebuild that light so I just um, you know backed out of that there so here, be careful you don't get that line from the, the corner of the ceiling in it. Um, there we go. That looks beautiful. Um, let's see. All right, deselect. I also don't like these little things on the door. I can just do those like that with the clones. No, the... What is that called? Uh, that thing. 
spot healing brush. Boom, boom, boom. This, hate. Let's get rid of that. Um, you might say, hey, you know what? This is um, part of the house. You probably shouldn't be getting rid of it. You know what? This is a um, this was a luxury retreat home. This is a rental. Um, and my feeling is when I'm doing this, I want to. It has to look as good as possible. This is not commercial real estate. This is, uh, or uh, it's not real estate for sale. It's um, commercial real estate. So I need to make this look as good as I can. You know, when people are renting properties, you want it to look really, really good. Um, also, too, you know, my, my feeling is, you know, I'm not, by ch taking out things like, um, um, well, all of these, I'm not really changing the property, just what you rem remember out of it. And when I think back to the last hotel I was in, you know, I don't remember the stupid fixtures or where the on-off switch was. That's not germane, really. But, um, you know, what you do remember are the big things. So I try and, you know, make it, make the big things stand out. Make, make a pretty picture. There we go. See, I think that, that looks pretty good. Um, verticals look good. I don't see anything annoying. That air conditioner, I'm going to leave there because, you know what, it's part of it. You know what, let's take out that shadow. Um, that's really easy. Just, again, the clone stamp tool. Grab from there. Line it up right along that line. Just remember to let up on your, um, your finger every now and then so you're not copying the same thing over. There's also one other thing I remember. I didn't do this on my original, but I did, did it on one of the tutorials that I shot, and that's get rid of this. It's kind of ugly. So let's just make a box around it so that we can cut it out really easily. Just like that. And then um, let's grab from over here, line it up right on that line, and that doesn't look so good, does it? Let's grab it from here. Okay, let's unselect, see what our lines look like. Yeah, I can see that right there, so I just mush that in. There we go. All right. You know what? That looks good. Let's save that. You know what? I like it. Um, I was going to show how to whiten the walls, but the walls look pretty white. I don't think we need to. I think that's that one's done. Let's call it a day. Um, if you have any questions, you know, please go ahead and write them below. Or, you know what? If you've got a better way of doing this or a better system that that makes this look better, please let me know. I'm always interested in trying to be you know, a better editor and to make better images. That's what it's all about, is making good images. So, you know, let me know your feedback, how to do any of this in a, in a better way. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.